All right, so we are here talking about water distribution systems and specifically looking at how we can use EPANET to simulate the flow and pressure throughout a water distribution system. And I've made a few other videos on this topic talking about the fundamental ideas of water distribution system analysis and then looking at how you can do the calculations with the Hardy Cross method uh, to balance mass and energy throughout the system and then uh, looking at how we could use Excel to do that and then talking about how we can use this EPA net tool uh, to do more complicated analysis with the network interface. Okay, so I made another video where I looked at some uh, simple network with uh, only I think two junctions and then a reservoir and a tank. Here I'm going to look at a more complicated uh, example. And so uh, let's pull up an, another example here. You can see this <clears throat> is a network here that has 10 pipes. They're labeled, uh, well, there's eight nodes, and the, the nodes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And then the pipes would be like A, B, A, C. B, E, C, D, D, E, so on. Okay, so there are, if you count that up, it should be 10 pipes, and I think there are eight nodes. So this is a lot more complicated. Here we have water coming in through a tower at point A, and it's at a fixed value of 60 liters per second, and then it's being pulled out at D, F, and H, uh, D at 30 liters per second, and then F and H at 15. So 60 in and 60 out, but at three different points. Uh, all the pipes here have a roughness height of 0.25 millimeters. And then the other data for the pipes are all given in this table here. Um, <clears throat> the lengths, the diameters, and then the roughness height. Okay, so that's all specified. The elevation then at each of the nodes is also needed to get the pressure everywhere. And I have computed those values, or I've provided those values here in this uh, table. So I'm going to be working with those values to input that into EPA net here. And then we'll see if we can get the same answer that I got in Excel. The solution that I got for the flows is here in this diagram uh, in Excel. So let's go over to EPA net and try to see if we can do this. So back to EPA net here. Um, all right, so here we've got, I, I opened EPA net here in a new model, and <clears throat> we need to uh, draw everything. Before we do that, we want to set up all the project options. So let's um, change the units here. So this is in gallons per minute. So we're going to do this one in metric. And so we need to switch here to uh, Looks like the different options, cubic feet per second, gallons per minute, million gallons a day, uh, liters per second, liters per minute. Okay, so liters per second is the units that we need to use because that's what we're given here. And then for head loss, we're going to do this one with the Darcy Weisbach equation instead of the Hayes and Williams, so we'll switch that. A few other options that you might want to look at are specific gravity and uh, relative viscosity, and basically... Uh, EPA net will assume you're at four degrees Celsius for these. If you want to use a different value for viscosity at a different temperature, you can basically put an adjustment factor here. So if you made it a 1.1, it would multiply the value at four degrees Celsius by 1.1 and use that. Okay, and then the other math options are here. So we've got those two things set, and now we should be good to put in information. It's a generally a good idea to double check the units so that when we put it in, we get everything right. So I've pulled that up here. So demand here will be the same as flow, and that's liters per second. So we're good there. You can see that the pipe diameter needs to be in millimeters, and then the diameter of a tank would be in meters, like the other example we did. Elevation in meters, and then flow liters per second here. Uh, let's see, the other one that we need is the roughness coefficient. For Darcy Weisbach, that is in millimeters here. So <clears throat> double check that for, for your units. We want to make sure that we put things in that are consistent with that. Okay. So our flows are given in uh, liters per second. So we're good there. The diameters are in centimeters. We need to convert those to millimeters. And then the roughness heights are in millimeters. So we're, we're good there. Okay. So I think we're, I think we have all that we need to, to get going. Uh, there is one other thing I may change. Yeah, defaults here. 
So our default value for roughness is going to be 0.25. Let's see if I can, I think there's a way that I can, yeah, pipe roughness. Right now it's set to 100. So I'm going to have to go through and change it. Everywhere in this example, it's 0.25. So let's just uh, change that to our default. And then the pipe diameter here, you can see it's set to like 12, like you're in inches. Okay, and this one we're, we're doing metric. So let, why don't we set that to something more common. It looks like 20 is used pretty often. So that'll get us closer there. So that'll save a little time. And then likewise with the length, looks like there's a bunch of them that are at 100. All right, so that will save me a little bit of time when I'm inputting info. And so I think we're ready to build this now. So uh, in the network we saw, it didn't show the tower, but there is a tower that feeds in at point A. So the way we need to do that one is to just draw that reservoir and then we need to set its height. I'll just go ahead and do that right now since we're talking about it. And it's gonna be a height of 10 meters. And then it's gonna be connected here to uh, point A. And at point A, we need to set that the inflow is 60 liters per second. And so we'll actually do that by setting the demand to be negative 60. And that'll kind of assure that, that 60 get pulled out of that tower no matter what. Uh, in a real system, you, you know, things don't work exactly like that. But, but for this example, this is how you have to do it in order to be able to uh, compare it to the, the one that we did before. So that's point A. And then we have point B and then C. D, E, F, G, H. And now we need to connect these. So we'll put a pipe from the reservoir to A. And we'll have A, B, and then A, C, and then C, D, D, E, and then B, E. C to F, let's see, the next one I have is F to G, D to G, oh, I missed that one. Let me just hit escape there, and there we go. Uh, e, H, and then let's see, G, H, missed it again. I think actually this is G, isn't it? Yeah, G, H, and then E H. All right, so now we've got our network drawn and now we need to just put in all the data from that data table here and see if we can do it. So we've already done that tower. Let's go through and do the junctions. And so this is junction two, let's change it to A. It has an elevation of, I need to go down to my junction table here. All right, so A is at four, B is there and it uh, is at three. C is there. Oh, did it save that? Sometimes I, I don't always trust that it saves it. Okay, it's there. C is at three also. Okay. D is at two. And oh, that's the junction ID. D is at two. And D is actually one of the ones where we have a demand, and so its demand is uh, 30. Okay, so we need to put that in here too. And then here is, this is E, and that is at an elevation of two, no demand. Seven, this one also has a demand of uh, 15, and the elevation there is one, and this is F. All right, and then this is G, its elevation is one also, and it's got no demand. And then this last one has a demand of 15, and it is H, H and one. All right, so that should be all the information I need for the junctions and the reservoir. And it doesn't matter what I put in for the data for pipe one, because we've said that this flow here is gonna be 60 in from this reservoir. So that'll be there. But we do need to go through and do the pipes. So I'm gonna scroll up here to my table. All right, so this is A, B, and now it shows the start and end note as A and B. And again, this assumes the flow goes from A to B. If the flow ended up going the other direction, <coughs> it won't in this example, but if it did, then it would show up as a negative in EPA net, okay? So I'll just go ahead and relabel it as A, B. Try to get all these labels right so that when we're looking at it, it's just a little bit easier to compare things. 
Uh, AB has got a length of 250, so our, you know, we see that it's changed our defaults here to 100, 20, and 0.25. This will save us some time uh, on some of these, but this one uh, is 30 for the diameter. Or uh, actually, it uh, ooh, that's a, something we got to watch. So the diameter is in millimeters, so this actually needs to be 300. So I should have set the the diameter to 200 as a default, but but I didn't. All right, so that was AB, and the next pipe is AC. So we'll change the name to AC. It has a length of 100 and diameter of 20, which I need to make to 200 because of it's got to be in millimeters. All right, the next one here is uh, let's see CD in the table. That one is at 125, and this needs to be, let's see, 200, okay, and let's change it to CD, and the next one here is DE, so DE for the name, it is 125, and then it is 200 here, okay, and then we've got pipe six, so BE, BE is 100 meters long, okay, and then 200 for this, all right, that one's done, and then 7 here is CF, and CF in the table is 100, and the diameter is 15, so that's 150 millimeters, okay, and then the next one is DG, and DG in the table is 150 millimeters, and, or no, sorry, it's 150 millimeters down here. Goodness, and the length of DG is 100. That was actually right already. All right, <clears throat> it's a bit tedious. EH here, uh, and then EH is 100, so that one's good. And then it has 150 millimeter diameter. Okay, and then that one's gonna be 0.25 and this one will be FG. FG is 125 with a diameter of 25. So this will be 250 in millimeters. And then here we got uh, GH. And GH is our last one. And that's 125 and 250. All right. So I think I've got them all in there now. So I, it's not a bad idea to do a quick check and just look at the information so elevation and demand let's do that uh, actually this is uh, I guess it's base demand that we want to see let's do that again so uh, base demand and we don't yeah so for <clears throat> let's double check these so four three three two two one 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 and then our demands here, we have 30, 15, and 15. So D is 30, F is 15, and H is 15. And then we've got negative, uh, we need a negative 60 at point A. We left that off. So that would have caused problems if we hadn't changed it. So let's change that to negative 60. All right. And let's take a quick look at our links here. And we'll look at the length and diameter and roughness. We don't really need anything else right now. All right, so we've got one, doesn't matter. So AB, 250, 300. AC, 100, 200. And really, we should be able to kind of go down and check these pretty quickly. CD, 125, 200. DE is 125, 20, or 200. BE is 100 and 200, and then, all right, look at the bottom here. So CF is 115, FG is 125, 25, DG 115, GH 125, 25, EH 115. Okay, so I think that everything in there is right. And so now let's go ahead and do it. Run was successful, yay. And let's pull up the results and we can look at the, let's look at the flows first. And flow, we don't need all these things necessarily. Head loss, reaction rate, okay, we don't need any of that. Let's just pull these up, but we can see here in 
AB is 28.5, and in meters cubed per second, I got that it was 0 0.0286, so that is the same to three significant figures. AC, 31.4, that matches DE, so DE is negative 17.23, and in my network down here, I had that it was going from E to D, so that, uh, that makes sense for it to be negative, and that's right, 172 is what I got. So these all look like they're matching up exactly with that. Uh, then we could also check our uh, pressure values and let's do we don't need the demand or quality here really. We can look at the elevation I guess. And so this shows us at each of the nodes here what we got for the pressure when I did these calculations. Um, 685. These look consistent also with the numbers that I got for the pressure. I didn't show those in the other one. But um, anyway, this is a more complicated network. So this shows you how you could do a problem, like a textbook problem. This is still simplistic compared with the real example um, because it's assuming that there's a constant inflow. That's not how things would necessarily work. You have to worry about tanks refilling. There are pumps and all sorts of other things. But those can all be added. At, at, and you can learn more about those if you continue to use EPA net. Um, so we might want to output this again, or you may want to make a report. There's like a full report option. You can save that as a file, and that's a good thing that will give you kind of all the details of what's in these other ones. You can also add some details to the um, graph here if we want to look at things. I figured out how to do that. So that's with uh, this map options, which you can get to, I think, through this button or, or through the menu there. If you go to notation here, it will display node IDs and link IDs, and so we can do that. And then we might also want to look at the, yeah, that pulls it back up. Let's look at the flow arrows, and let's make them a little bit bigger, uh, and we'll make them filled. Or I don't know, Let's look at the fancy ones. All right, yeah, so those are fancy, and yeah, again, you can see the flow like DE there is flowing to the left, even though we thought it would, or we drew it initially, is going to the to the right. So. Um, anyway, this shows how you can kind of play around with this and use it to do uh, a textbook kind of uh, problem. And from here, then you could build into more realistic uh, networks.